have those of you who did your homework get it out. And let's ask the questions. You said it was a hard assignment. Number 25. 25. All right. Let's talk about this. Now, first of all, I am not going to ask you this question on your quiz. What I am going to ask you to do is to find the sum. I'm going to say here's a sequence, or here's a series, find the sum. Now the actual question is, does it convert? It, in order to have a sum, in order to be able to do this, it has to convert. These sequences will always converge if the ratio has an absolute value less than 1. Now again, I am not going to ask you, I'm not going to say, can this be sum? I'm going to say, find the sum. This can be sum. Because, how am I getting from term to term? Well, I don't like to do division by two. I have to think about it as multiplying by one half. So the ratio is a half. Is a half less than one? Yep. Yes. So this can be sum. It is a dot, dot, dot. It goes on forever. It is infinite. So the sum of an infinite series, right there's your formula. What is it? 6 over 1 minus 1 half. Which is 3. Which is 6 divided by a half. Which is 6 times 2 which is 12. Your sum is 12. So, Katie, the question will be, here's the series, find the sum. Okay? So you're going to have to know how to use this formula. Okay. Anybody else have a question about these really hard homework problems? Uh, can you do... You do work number seven. Number seven. Find the sum. Negative seven, negative three, one, five, nine. Negative seven, negative three, one, five, nine. It says find the sum of how many? Um, oh, just find the sum of what's there. So it's 13 is the last one. So how many terms is that? One, two, three, four, five, six? Javon? So I'm going to find the sum of six terms. What kind of sequence is that, you guys? Uh, that is How are we getting the term adding, adding four. I'm adding four, so it's arithmetic. So I look over here, I'm going to add them up, and it's arithmetic, so that's this formula right here. Right? So the sum of six terms, according to this formula right here, the sum of six terms would be 6 <coughs> over 2 times, what does a sub 1 mean? Negative, Negative 7. Negative 7, its first term, plus a sub 6, which means 6 terms. Remember, we're adding up 6 terms. How do you know to use this formula instead of that one? Because yeah. it's a sum. Okay. And, so, that, and that one's for which okay. That's just to find the number in the list. Okay. Like if you wanted to know the hundredth term. Okay. So we have 3 times 6, I got 18. Alright. Let's get our note sheets out. We have a few things to wrap up there. Okay, remember, we still have to go back to our old note sheets. Remember, we skipped some stuff on there. But right now, let's look on page 65. Page 65. We have one more thing to, to do, and that is we're going to write these fractions in lowest terms. What 
does this mean? Uh, what does that mean? Repeating. It means it's a repeating decimal. So that means 0.44444, da 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 da, right? Yes. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. 0 0.4 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.004 plus 0.0004 and so on. If I added up all these decimals, would I get this? Yeah. I, would, I would hope so. I would, wouldn't I? Let's look at these numbers a little more carefully. There's a pattern there, isn't there? How am I getting from term to term here? What changed? The place, the tenth, the hundredth, um, Well, I suck in an extra zero, right? Well, yeah. What does that mean in terms of adding or multiplying? You add another term? I'm what? That's what I'm doing. Okay. I'm timesing by a ten. I am dividing by ten or multiplying by one ten. That's what I said. That's what I said. So my ratio is one ten. If we just keep multiplying by a ten, we just keep moving that decimal point and generating those terms. Mm -hmm. Now, how long does this go on? Forever. It's infinite. So we are going to use our infinite formula. So our infinite formula says what? What does it say? Take the first term, which is 0.4, and divide it by 1 minus the ratio, which is 1 tenth. Give you a little hint. If your decimal point is just moving one place each time, it's always going to be one tenth. What if your decimal point was moving two places? One, one hundred? Mm -hmm. All right, what's one minus one tenth? Point nine. Point nine. So point, point four over point nine is the same as four ninths. Your job was to rewrite this as a fraction. There it is. Take four ninths and on your calculator. Just do four divided by nine. So this is the fraction that represents that. Now listen, you guys, if you came to the opening day math week, you know that we have a cheer. We got the pom poms over there. We have a cheer. Uh-oh. Part of the math league cheer is. We are number 0.9 bar. Ooh. Ooh. Now, That's a bar. why do we say that? Well, I'd like you to do the same thing with 0.9 repeating that we did with 0.4 repeating. So 0.9 repeating would be 0.9 plus 0.09 plus 0.009 and so on, right? Yeah. So what will the sum be? One. The first term, that's exactly right. Oops, that's exactly right. So when the mathletes say we are number 0.9 bar, what we're really saying is we are number one, one because 0.9 bar okay. is the same as one. Okay. <laughs> We are number of bar. I can't wait my new car. Ooh, I can lucky work with that. Watch out. Shannon, listen. Give me no pom poms. Pop it. Okay, here we go. Next problem. Point six three six three six three six three. Oh, that's a funky number action. Now, if we rewrite this as a series, it would be point six three plus point oh oh six three point oh 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 six three and so on. This time, because we have two decimal places that are repeating, we're adding two zeros each time, which means we're moving the decimal two places, 
which means our ratio is 0.01. If you're only moving at one place, like our first two examples, it's 0.1. If you're moving at two places, if there's two places repeating, it's going to be 0.01. All right, so what's the sum? Well, it's going to be the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. Now, what is 1 minus 0 0.01? 0 0.99. 0 0.99. So we have 0.63 over 0 0.99, which is 63 over 99. Does that fraction reduce? Yes. yes. 9 goes into 63, 7, and 9 goes into 99, 11. 11, Illuminati, Illuminati. Type 7 divided by 11 on your calculator, and you should get this. It's pretty freaky. It's pretty freaky. 7, 11 is the answer to my problem. Bless you. Bless you. How are we? Are we all, all set on that? Mm-hmm. Because we moved the decimal point two places as we went from term to term. So we divided by a hundred. Dividing by a hundred is the same as multiplying by one one hundred. Okay? Now, what I would like for you to do is I gave you a packet yesterday, I think, that had some practice quizzes in it. Yes, sir. Well, the last question we got from you is this one. Okay, so has everybody now located your pre quizzes? I call them pre quizzes. So we have a pre quiz 9.4, 9.5. Now, let me give you a little rundown here. You guys know next week is a little bit odd with the schedule, right? Yes. Okay. So, on Monday, we will have class. We do not have class on Tuesday. But on Monday, we have like a double class. Oh. Okay? So, what's going to happen on Monday? First of all, tomorrow, you have a bus quiz. Oh. You'll do it as a group. So we should do great. So like an I spy type deal? Now, no. No. on Monday, when we have this big, huge block of time, we're going to do what we're going to do today. We're going to review and practice, and then at the end of the period on Monday, we're actually going to take a quiz over this. Not a group quiz, an actual quiz, okay? So, to help prepare for that, Everybody has out your pre-quiz. Here we go. We're going to get through as much of it as we can. Number one. Number one. Identify this as arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Shh. Please don't throw things. Why do you say arithmetic, Katie? Because you are adding one each time. So number 1A is arithmetic, and the common difference is 1. Very good, Katie. All right, what about number 2? It is geometric. Okay. What are we multiplying by? Multiplying by it's not one third, Maya, but you're close. It's not one third, it's two thirds. We're multiplying by two thirds. Now, that is really hard to see with the first couple terms, but if you look at the end, 
Look where we go from negative 4 thirds to negative 8 ninths. Do you see how you're multiplying my 2 over 3 to make that happen? Yeah. Right now, you have negative 2 over 1. If you multiply that by 2 thirds, do you get negative 4 thirds? Yes. So we are getting from term to term by multiplying by 2 thirds. That makes it geometric. What about C? They're the square, so you see the pattern, but it's neither. It's not arithmetic or geometric. If I said to you, what's the next term, you would all be able to figure it out, but not because it's arithmetic or geometric. It isn't. Good, good, good. <coughs> all right, number two. Now remember, I will give you these formulas, okay? So number two, your job is to find A sub 11. Now, it's pretty obvious, boys and girls, if we're finding A sub 11, that you're going to use one of these two formulas, right? A sub 11. Now, how are you going to decide which one you're going to use? If it's geometric or arithmetic. So we need to look at it, look at this set of numbers. Would you say it's arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. What's the ratio? Multiply by 3. Does everybody see that? If you are geometric, you're going to use this formula. I'm going to give you the formula. So A sub, I'm not going to tell you which one's which. No. This won't be written here. A sub 11 will equal what? 1, which is the first term, times the ratio, which you already told me is 3, raised to the, what power? 10. How do we get 10? 11 minus 1. When you say A sub 11, N is 11, Maya. Okay. Um, how do you know the ratio is 3? Look at your sequence of numbers. You're going 1, 3, 9, 27. Maya, you just have to figure out how am I getting from term to term? I'm timesing by 3. And you just have to figure that out. So just spend a minute looking at it. You're either going to be adding, Maya, you're either going to be adding the same number or you're going to be multiplying the same number. Just got to figure out which one it is. Okay, so I type this into my calculator. And the answer is 59,049. Are we okay with B? I mean A? Are we okay with A? Ready for B? Where well, is the answer? Do we have to put A to sub 11 equals or can we just... You can just put a circle around this. All right, B. Find S sub 100. Now, right now, before I look at anything else, I have it narrowed down. I'm either going to use this formula or I'm going to use this one. Right? These are the only two that have S sub something. So I'm going to use one of those formulas. Now, look at your set of numbers. Are we adding something or are we timesing something? Adding negative three. So this is arithmetic and the common difference is negative three. Right? Now, if it's arithmetic, then I'm gonna be using this formula. So what does that formula tell me to do? S sub 100 equals 100 over 2. The first term, which is 32, plus, oh shoot, I need A sub 100, don't I? Do you see that? Oh my, I don't know what a sub 100 is. That means the 100th term. 
I do not know what that is. So how am I going to find the hundredth term, A sub 100? Right up at the top. So over to the side, A sub 100. Equals 32 minus 3 times 99. Where did this minus 3 come from? That's by common difference, right? So now I'll figure that out. Negative 265. Now, every time kids get all excited, negative 265, there's my answer. Put a circle around it and move on. No. What is this? That's the number that goes here, right? So now I have 100 over 2 times 32 minus 265. And that is going to be my answer. I got a negative 11,650. And that's what I put a circle around. Or put in the answer blank, whichever way it works. <coughs> that's probably the hardest problem. Actually, there's one more that might be harder. See. Now remember, all these problems are formula driven, so you're going to be using a formula for them. So when you look at problem C, you immediately think what? What formula am I going to use? Well, huh, it just says S. Okay? It just says S. Do I have a formula up on the board that just says S? Oh, yeah. Infinite. It's the infinite formula. Does that make sense when you look at the problem that maybe we'd be doing infinite? Yeah, because it says dot, 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 right? It doesn't say find the first five terms. It just says no forever. So we're going to find the sum of this infinite geometric series. Now, Maya Brownlow, when I, I figured out I'm gonna find the sum, and it requires me to know the first term, which I know the first term is five, but it also requires me to know the ratio. So Maya, look at these terms. What are we timesing by to get from term to term? Uh, one third. One third. Very good. Now, I'm going to do this without a calculator. This would be 5 divided by 2 thirds, which is 5 times 3 halves. So the answer is 15 halves. You will have a calculator. Caution. How many things are in this denominator? So you need parentheses. If you're going to type it in on the calculator, make sure you have parentheses. Make sure you put parentheses in that denominator if you're going to plug it into the, the calculator. Okay. seven and a half. Yeah. Just type it in with parentheses, you'll get the right answer. Or, better yet, you're all doing it on the calculator and get the wrong answer. Maybe we should do it without the calculator. Because this is easy. 
Okay, one more, I know, two more. Now we want to find A sub 2014. Now wait a minute. A sub 2014. Now it's an A, so we're going to be using one of these two formulas, right? How do we decide which one? Are we arithmetic or geometric? So look at that string of numbers. Are we adding something or are we timesing something? Adding four. So our difference is four. So according to the formula, now this one, A sub 2014 will be what? One plus four times 2013. And how did we get 2013? 2014 minus 1. So your answer should be 8,053. Not too hard. E, find S sub 6. Now, since it's S sub 6, you only have two choices right here, S sub something. These are the only two S sub formulas. So now we go back to the sequence. How are we getting from term to term? Multiplying by 4. Our ratio is 4. We're timesing by 4. So that means we will use this formula? All right, so what, what do I need? S sub 6 equals A sub 1, so 2 minus 2 times 4 to the 6 over 1 minus 4. It's 1 minus R in the bottom. Before you go to the calculator, what's 1 minus 4? Make that negative 3. Then we can type it in. 2 minus 2 times 4 raised to the 6th power equals divided by negative 3. 2, I just use my formulas, right? Now, number 3, this is the limit stuff we talked about yesterday. We haven't practiced very much. So let's see how you how much you remember. Anybody have an idea for A? 0. Inside the parentheses, you have negative 6 over 1. Is that fraction top heavy or bottom heavy? Top heavy. Top heavy. And when they're top heavy, they are? Divergent. 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 Yeah. This is divergent. This one's negative. divergent. What? It's negative. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay. How about B? No, it's bottom heavy. Three yeah. What's top heavy? It's just rearranged. Yeah, it's just rearranged. Very good. In problem B, kids, don't I have an N over an N? Yeah. So the answer would be three halves. Three halves. No, three halves. Remember, you're getting confused. If you have N's over N's, compare the coefficients and that's the answer. If you have N squareds over N's, that's no limit. That's top heavy. 
But if you have 3n over 2n, that's going to be 3 halves. So let's review those rules. I know we didn't spend much time on it yesterday. Let's review it. If you have n's over n's, if you have some n stuff over some n stuff, like you do in problems b and c, if the power, if the biggest power matches on the top and the bottom, so you have n squared over n squared, something like that, then that fraction is the answer. So if you had 5n squared over 7n squared, the answer would be 5 sevenths, period. If you have more n's on the top, we still have n's over n's, but we have more of them on the top, that's divergent, no limit. If you have more of them on the bottom, that is zero. zero. Okay? So, look at problem C. Yeah. How, what's the biggest power of n we have in the problem? Three. Do we have n cubed on top? What's the answer? Zero. zero. There is no limit. It's zero. I mean, there is a limit. It's zero. It goes to zero. How about D? Now, D is a different kind of problem, kids. You don't have this. Is it divergent? Okay? You don't have this. You have a fraction being raised to a power. Look at the fraction that's in the problem. Is it top heavy or bottom heavy? Uh, Kids, I'm looking at a fraction that says 3 fifths. Bottom. Which is bigger, 3 five. or 5? Five? 5. 5. If the bigger number is in the bottom, then the limit is 0. zero. Now, E, we're back to n's over n's. This is no limit. Who has the biggest n? The top. So the answer is no limit. Divergent, no limit. Okay, we're going to practice some more of those because I'm not feeling confident there. But let's finish the sheet first and then we'll practice some more limits. All right, number four. <coughs> Find the explicit rule for this sequence. Explicit rules are these right here. These are the explicit rules. So anytime it says find an explicit rule, you're going to be using one of these two formulas. Now how will you know which one to use? Arithmetic or geometric. So let's look at A. It's geometric. And the ratio is 3. So A has a ratio of 3. Since it's geometric, we'll be using this. We will simply write A sub n equals 2 times 3 to the n minus first. In other words, I take my geometric formula and I plug in my first term and my ratio, and I'm done. This is the answer. Do not multiply these together, you can't. Leave it like this. This is it, that's all there is to it. Okay, so explicit formula, I'm gonna use one of these. And I'm going to plug in, if it's the geometric one, I'm going to plug in the first term and the ratio. If it's the arithmetic one, I'm going to plug in the first term and the difference. All right, so let's look at B. What's happening in B? We're adding 4. So the common difference is 4. So now I'll go up to that top formula, because that's arithmetic. And what is a sub n equal? In this set of numbers, a sub n will equal what? Negative 7, Negative seven plus, four. plus 4 times n minus 1. Now this one will clean up a little bit because did you see you can distribute here? So we have negative 7, 4n minus 4. Now can these be added? So we have a sub n equal to 
negative 11 plus 4n, and that's your simplified answer. Well, because you can. I would take this one down further if I could, but I can't. This one, no, you can't do anything. You're done. Here, you can distribute and collect like terms. So, make a little star or something next to that one. It says, find the explicit rule. Where do we get our explicit rules from? Our A sub N formulas. Right? Our A sub n's. And we plug in the first term and the ratio or the first term and the difference. That's it. And then simplify if you can. All right, last problem. Given A sub 4 is 2 and A sub 10 is 26, find a sub 200. <coughs> Jack. You should, make the, you should write down all the terms you go first, like on the line. Very good. So Jack's remembering, we did these in class. This is the other one that's a little bit tricky. Jack says, I don't know much about this sequence. There's the first term, second term, third term. The fourth term is 2. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The tenth term is 26. So I've kind of drawn a picture of what they gave me. They said the fourth term in the list is 2. The tenth term in the list is 26. Does anybody besides Jack remember kind of how we approached these the other day? What did we do once we got it drawn? We kind of chopped it off, so we looked at just the part of the sequence that we had a starting and an ending for. So this became, for a moment, our first term. It is not the real first term. Here's the real first term. But for what I'm looking at, that's my first term. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. That would be the seventh term. Now, they told me in the problem that it is arithmetic. So I'm going to use this formula because it's arithmetic. How do I know I'm not using this one? This one's arithmetic That's too. Sum. That's to find the sum. There's no summing in this problem, right? We're just listing. Okay. Now, in my sequence, just the part I have blocked off. How many terms are there? Seven. So n is seven. So this says a sub seven, which by the way, what is a sub seven? 26 equals a sub one. What's a sub one? Two. Remember, I'm only looking at this. Plus, I have no idea what my common difference is, so I have to put v. I don't know what it is. But I do know n is what? Six. Well, n is 7, so the parentheses becomes 6. Why is n 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. n is the number of terms. Is that solvable? Yeah. So subtract 2, I get four. 24 equals 6d, so d equals 4. Now, what's that do for me? Oh, they, go up. they go up by four. So if I wanted to go this way, Julia, I would be adding four. But I really would like to know what this is. So instead of adding four, I will go backwards. I'll subtract four. Did you get negative 10? Yeah. Now wait. <coughs> That's not the answer to the question. I wanted the 200th term. Now I can do it because the first term is negative 10 and the common difference is 4. 
So A sub 200 will be negative 10 plus 4 times 199. Okay, so uh, for tomorrow, uh, if I don't have your permission slip yet, I have to have it by the end of the day or you can't go. Bring it to me, bring it to me. If you need a parent signature, have your parent email me.